my heart saying, God, I am ready to receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This time is so precious. This is the way to start your day. This is the way for your mind and your heart, your soul, and your emotions to be focused on what is good and true and right and beautiful and God's perfect love for you. When you focus on that, then everything else fades. And then you walk through valley. You walk through fire. You walk through rivers. You walk through trials. Nothing. Nothing overwhelms you because God has already overwhelmed you with His goodness and His power. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I encourage you to stand and worship this morning. Worship God in spirit and in truth. Worship God with the joy of the Lord bubbling up inside of you knowing that God is here. God is for you. God has gone ahead of you and made a way and he covers you behind. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory.
Jesus. Glory Ooh. to God. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. the 
This is not church as usual. This is not just come and get a little pep talk. Woo-woo, right? No. This is to give you the power, the revelation, the anointing, and the equipping to be kings and priests in the kingdom of our God. Yes. Kings and priests, not spectators. Yes. Participants of the government of God. Amen. God has a kingdom and it's called the government. And it's not just supposed to be in heaven. It's supposed to be on earth. Didn't he pray? Your kingdom come. Come. Come where? From heaven to earth. Your will be done there. In heaven as it is on, on, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. This is what God wants. Amen. God wants his children to be free and reigning in life. So what has happened? Well, we realize that the enemy has come years ago and, and, and robbed us. Robbed us of our beautiful, glorious nature in Christ. Robbed Adam and Eve in that garden as he deceived Eve and got Adam to willfully fall and follow him. And by doing so, our entire nature became corrupted as human beings. Like there's nobody born good anymore. Okay? But now you can be born again very good. Yes. Born again. Amen. Amen. You get born again. Mm. Not by the will of men. Mm. But by the will of the Father. When you say, I put my faith in Jesus and Him alone yes. for my salvation. I put my faith in Jesus as flesh and blood. Son of oh, God no. came for me. To give me redemption. Forgive me. To recreate me as a new person, a new man, a new woman, filled with the spirit of the living God, initiated into this family, adopted into this family, a new name, a new nature, a new mind, a new way of thinking, a new heart. Hallelujah. Rescued us out of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of God's dear son. Now, when you're part of the kingdom, you need to know where you live. Do you know your address? Oh, yeah. Do you know your address? Amen. <laughs> when you know your address and nobody can tell you, you don't live there. Oh, no, I do live here. I do live at this place. I am part of the kingdom. Amen. I'm part of the kingdom of God. God has a place for me in the kingdom. Yes. God has a place for me on this planet. God has a position for me to fill. And I'm only going to know what that is when I'm born again, when I listen to the spirit of the living God, when I am properly equipped by the king and those that he has commissioned and called to equip me and make me ready. So I don't stay like a child. I grow and become a mature disciple and a soldier in the army of the Lord as well as a king, as well as a queen, as well as a priest to our God. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. So what is the kingdom plan? We must know what the kingdom plan is because, like, like I said, we have been brought into the kingdom of light. We're no longer in darkness. We're no longer wondering, what's my end going to be? What's my life going to be like? Am I going to die sick? Am I going to die broke? Am I going to die homeless? And what am I going to die a drug addict? Am I, am I, am I, am I, is everybody in my family going to leave me? What is my life going to be like? The Lord says, no, no, that's, that's how demonic influence puts into your mind so you're scared of your future you're fearful but God says no in my kingdom there's no fear in my kingdom there's there's no darkness in my kingdom there's no sickness or disease or bondage nobody's in a cage in my kingdom they're free the only one in a cage is the devil the only one in the cage is the demons the only one in the cages are the principalities and the powers who've been brought low by Jesus our conqueror now we have to enforce that conquering we have to reinforce his overcoming power we have to reinforce it in a world where the devil still roams about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour now if you don't stop him He's coming after you. Oh, right. He's coming after you. God warned Cain before Cain brought an ungodly sacrifice to God. And before he killed his brother, God said to him, Cain. He didn't tell Abel this because everybody has their own battle to fight. But he told Cain, Cain, 
Sin is crouching at your door. When you think of crouching, don't you think like a panther, like a lion? You think of something waiting, waiting to pounce on its prey? Sin is crouching at your door. That's a portal. That's an opening that takes you from inside to outside. Its desire is for you. It wants to consume you. It wants to co corrupt you. It wants to destroy you, Cain. But you must rule over it. Amen. You must rule over it. You must rule. Amen. Amen. You must rule so you won't become a casualty. Yeah, right. So you won't become the enemy's next meal. Right. Christians have become the devil's meal. Ooh. They've become the demon's meal. They've become dwellings of demons. They've become dwellings of sickness and disease and corruption. The church, pastors, Leaders have become corrupt. Yes. People we were supposed to trust have become corrupt because they exchanged the beautiful nature of God and a humble heart for the offer of the enemy. Many of them never got free. Many of them never got delivered. Many of them never got set free from, from the demonic bondage because there was no one to set them free. Oh, right. Many of them became corrupt and willingly agreed with the enemy agreed. and yeah. signed contracts in secret yeah. and became angels of light instead of angels of truth. Wow. Instead of messengers of truth, yes. they caved in. But in this kingdom, God is cleaning house. God is cleaning house. God is saying to all of you who are bound, there's freedom. If you want it, there's freedom. It's not going to look so pretty. You may cough up, you may spit up, you may roll on the floor. Demons might scream out of you, pastor. But you know what? It's better to be embarrassed and free than to be bound and chased. can get the purity of the gospel to you. Hallelujah. God says it's time now for my children to be free. Yeah. It's time for my children to be free. Some of the greatest ones wouldn't accept this end time revival. But I've called the foolish. I've called the weak and the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. I've called the, the, the those that look small and stupid to the world to, to be raising up a banner to be part of my army. To be part of my army. The willing. The humble. Those who are boldly humble. Hallelujah. Boldly humble. You think, well, that's, that's, that, that goes against itself. No, it doesn't. Boldly humble is what Jesus did. Is what Jesus is. Boldly humble means being boldly obedient no matter what. Come hell or high water. I'm not backing down from my father's will. Because I know kingdom plan. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So let's let's look at what, what the world says about the kingdom. In Matthew 4, 23 through 25 in the Passion Translation, it says Jesus ministered from place to place. Throughout all the provinces of Galilee, he taught in the synagogues preaching what? The wonderful news of the kingdom yeah. and healing every kind of sickness and disease among the people. His fame spread throughout all Syria. Many people who were in pain and suffering with every kind of illness were brought to Jesus for their healing. Epileptics, paralytics, and those tormented by demonic powers were all set free. <laughs> Everyone who was brought to Jesus was healed. <laughs> resulted in massive crowds of people following him, including people from Galilee, Jerusalem, the land of Judah, the region of the ten cities known as Decapolis, and beyond the Jordan River. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Jesus came to bring the kingdom which they didn't know, they'd never heard of. It was a new concept. It was spoken in shadows by prophets hundreds and thousands of years before. It was spoken of in mysteries. It was spoken of in oracles. It was spoken about in prophetic riddles that you could only grab a piece, a little piece. But those who could grab a piece, God would open up their eyes. God would open up their eyes and expand their understanding by the Spirit. Because this is not intellect. No. This is not book knowledge. This is 
spirit knowledge. Ooh. This is revelation knowledge that only comes to you through and by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And even though the Holy Spirit didn't dwell in mankind before Pentecost, He was still there speaking, hovering over every single person. Who was saying, who would say yes to God? And now Jesus says, the kingdom is here. The kingdom is here. This kingdom government, this revival, this church is about to be birthed. There's a church that's about to be birthed. It's not going to look like the nation of Israel. It's not going to look like the, the, the children that, that, that came out of Egypt and came through the wilderness and went into the promised land. Those were all shadows of the kingdom that would come. And it's God's kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Yes, and what happens in that kingdom? Everybody gets healed. Yeah. Everybody gets free. Yeah. Demonic spirits don't get to dwell in you anymore. Woo. All the brokenness in your family, all the brokenness in the generations past is removed when you come to Jesus. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power of Almighty God, the anointing. Jesus, the anointed one, came with the anointing that destroys the yokes. And it's the only thing that will destroy the devil's influence and power in a human being's life. Amen. The only thing. That's why we rely totally on the anointing. We rely totally on the power of the Holy Spirit. And from there, everything else is birth. The anointing of God is what we need in the church. And now what God is bringing back now in massive, massive amounts. Amen. This anointing is going to be poured out, poured out, poured out through His vessels, His chosen vessels in every single nation of this planet. So everybody can receive healing, deliverance, freedom, and the revelation of the kingdom. Amen. Because before you can become and act and behave and think like and live like a king, you need to be free. Amen. Right. You can't have your enemies gang, 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 biting your ankles. Uh, you can't on. have those little chihuahuas on there nipping at your ankles. I don't, <laughs> care if they're little demons. I don't care if they're big old shepherds or big wolves. You cannot be overcome by an enemy and rule. Right. you got to rule over the enemy. And that's only yes. by the power of Jesus' anointing. Because no human being on their own could ever break the devil's curse on you, could ever break a demonic spirit, could ever be set free. The world has tried by sending people to rehab. Okay. Rehab doesn't restore or resurrect anybody. It's man's attempt, but it's cyclical. It's just a circle. Go to rehab, get out, go back on it, get out, go back on it, get out, go back on it. That's, that's why these things never help. And people say, well, I've been in such and such anonymous for all these years, but I'm still an alcoholic. I'm still a drug addict. I'm still bound. And my kids are now experiencing it. My kids are now alcoholics. Don't tell me that any man-made group can get you free from demons because it can't. Right. And you, you must understand it is a demon. Yeah. It's not a psychological disorder. All right. It's a demon. All right. Let's call it what it is so we can get it out. All right. We've got to get it. We've got to get it be exterminated. These things have to come out of us in Jesus' name. Yes. But it's only going to come out by the anointing. Yes. But in this kingdom, all of that is here. All of that is available. And there's an end time revival that has hit the earth. It has hit the earth. It's greater than a meteor. It's greater than a falling star. Oh, let me tell you. It's massive. It's stronger and brighter than the sun. It's stronger and brighter than anything that has ever hit this planet since Jesus Christ came and shed His holy blood for all of mankind. Because this is the will of God, the kingdom plan. Amen? Amen. So this is, this is how the kingdom is going to spread. Amen. Healing, miracles, deliverance, yes. and then the wonderful word of God. Glory to God. In Matthew 6.10, it says, Manifest your kingdom realm. This is Jesus praying to the Father. And cause your every purpose to be fulfilled where? On, on earth. earth. Yes. Wait, wait. Uh, on earth? Yes, Lord. We're not sitting on our rapture road waiting, waiting for Jesus to <laughs> get us out of here? No. No. For your every purpose to be fulfilled on earth just as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Matthew 11.12. From the moment John the Baptist stepped onto the scene... 
the moment John stepped onto the scene into his ministry, the realm of heaven's kingdom is bursting forth. Wow. And passionate people Woo. have taken a hold of its yes. power. You see, this is not a kingdom you can see. John didn't come with a big army and a bunch of horses and a bunch of chariots and a bunch of, of, of well-armed men with swords and spears and shields. John came as one crying out in the wilderness saying, Prepare you the way of the Lord, for the king is coming. I am his herald. I am the one that goes before and lets your heart get ready. See, God always sends out messengers ahead of time saying, Announce my coming. There you go. Announce my coming. The angels announced to the shepherds who were out on their fields by night and said, The king has been born. The king is here. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. Wow. See, this is what God has done. And this is what God is doing now. He is bringing his end time revival Hallelujah. to the church and to the world, to all those who want to. All those who are willing and all those who are ready to worship God in the beauty of His holiness. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 4.20 The kingdom realm of God comes with true power. Not, Not simply with impressive words. Ooh, say that loud. <laughs> oh, we've had impressive words in the church, haven't we? We've had people who have gotten doctrines of divinities and they, they use such big words you can't even read their stuff. You're like, I can't, I can't pronounce or spell that word, and I'm not going to take up the time to look it up right now. Like, if it's not simple, I'm, I'm not getting it. Like, could you make it simple like one of Jesus' parables? Because I can understand that by the Spirit, but as soon as you get man's intellect in there, you fluffed it up. It's kind of like those shakes at McDonald's. They're puffed with so much air, you're not getting ice cream like you get at Dairy Queen. Okay, they just puff it up in there, and you're like, why do I have indigestion afterwards? Because you just sucked up a bunch of air in your straw. It's not real ice cream. Hey, Amen. So that's what's happened. That's what's happened in the church. It's just been puffed up. But knowledge does that. Knowledge puffs people up. I know. I know this doctrine. I know this doctrine. I know five-point Calvinism. I know Armenianism. I know, I know what this teacher believes. I know what this teacher believes. I know what this man teaches. I know all the world religions. But do you know Jesus? Do you know the power of the Holy Spirit? Because that's all that you need to know. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen? Now in Ephesians, Paul was talking about the kingdom. He was talking about what we were supposed to become in this kingdom, not just a preschool of a bunch of babies getting their diapers changed. Okay? The angels don't need to keep changing our diapers. The fivefold ministry shouldn't be raising up only babies. Okay? And have a big old room filled with pacifiers, bottles, and, and huggies, right? We, we need to raise up an army, a mature army. So Paul writes in Ephesians. This is, what, this is what Jesus wants to do for his bride. Amen. And to the husbands, you are to demonstrate love for your wives with the same tender devotion that Christ demonstrated to us, his bride. Wow. So now he just switched from a natural husband mm. and wife to, wait a minute, right. yeah. Christ and his bride? Wow. So the church is Christ's bride? Mm. The entire church, men and women, young and old, children... Mm -hmm. Older age people were his bride. Mm -hmm. So marriage between a man and a woman is just a shadow Amen. of Jesus marrying his bride. Amen. So now he says, for he died, our bridegroom, he's our bridegroom king, he died for us. Sacrificing himself to make us holy and pure. Cleansing us through the showering of the pure water of the Word of God. Wow. All that He does, all that He does, is His kingdom plan is designed to make us a mature church for His pleasure. God doesn't want a child bride. You catch that? God's not going to have baby bride. He wants a bride equal to him oh. in maturity and love, companionship. What companionship can you have with a baby? No. As an adult, what companionship can you have with a seven-year-old? No. You can love them, but, but you always realize, but I'm 30 and you're 
seven, or I'm, you know, I, I, I'm old and you're young. You, you want them to get to your same level. Your same level. So look what it says. It's designed to make us a mature church for His pleasure. Until we become a source of praise to Him. Iron sharpening iron. Gold and gold. Mature and mature. We can talk to Him on His level. Jesus. We're supposed to be able to talk to God on His level. Wow. Well, nobody can talk to God on His level. If God says you can, you can. All right. Hallelujah. See yourself now as a mature yes. bride of Christ, a woman or man of God who can talk to Jesus eye to eye. Mm. Eye to eye. Face to face. Mouth to mouth. Wow. Amen. He breathes, you breathe. Ooh. And you breathe the same breath that He breathed back into you. You breathe it back into Him. And He's like, this is what I like. This is how it's supposed to be. This is the same relationship he has with the father. He doesn't say, oh, father, thank you for making me a two-year-old toddler. He says, I and my father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen my father. And my Holy Spirit is part of us. We are three in one. And I want you to be part of the three in one. So we understand we start as babies, but we're not supposed to be staying there or satisfied with being a baby. Always going, wow, Jesus, would you please provide for my gas bill and my electric bill? Jesus, could you help me with the situation I've been struggling with for 20 years? He says, I sent my power to you. You received deliverance. Now it's time for you to grow. Oh, now it's time for you to lay a hold of those things that I have already given to you. Lay a hold of it. You see that? You see that sword over there in the corner? It's called your Bible. Maybe you should get it out and start learning how to use it. Woo! So we become a source of praise to Him, glorious and radiant, beautiful and holy. Without fault or flaw. Wow. Wait a minute. How we can't do that till we get to heaven? Absolutely, you can do it right now. We are supposed to be a source of praise to God. Glorious and radiant. Beautiful and holy. Without fault or flaw. Yes, you can live without fault or flaw. Because you become so much transformed into the image of Jesus that you're not even sinning. You're not rebelling. You're not coming against God in any way. Wow. You're not coming against His will or His kingdom plan. You're not allowing the devil to shoot stupid thoughts into your mind that, oh, it's all going to go down the toilet oh, next yeah. week. No! Mm. No, you surround yourself with other like-minded believers who are surrendered to God. Yeah. You do the work of Jesus all day long because you're in this beautiful body. Mm. You're not separated from the body. Amen. You're part of the body. Amen? Amen. Glorious and radiant. And then why does he say, look at Ephesians 5.27 in the New King James Version. That Jesus might present her to himself. Uh, I present you to myself. Why is, his, why is his glory shown? Because he took a bride who was completely a stranger and alienated, alienated from him. Under the devil's sway. Fallen with no hope. An entirely evil nature from the enemy to varying degrees. And he shed his blood and she received it. She received it. Amen. The sons and daughters of God are those who believed and received him. And now he looks and he gets glory. He says, I have done this for you. Bless you, God. I have presented you to myself, mm -hmm. and you have let me. Mm -hmm. You have let me wash you and cleanse you. You have let me fill you. You have let me take you through. Mm -hmm. Fire, wind, rain, snow, trials, persecution, enemy, darkness, valley of the shadow of mm -hmm. death. You trusted in me. You looked at my eyes when the enemy was screaming all around you yeah. like a tornado. You kept your eyes on me. You stayed with the fivefold ministry. You stayed with the church. Yeah. You stayed with me. You weren't in one month and an out for six. In one and an out for six. You stayed with me. You learned how to endure the cross, despise the shame because of the joy that I had put inside of you, that you would grow to look and be and act and think and live and walk just like me as part of my body. Wow. Wow. Becoming a glorious church. 
wow. not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Amen. So don't let the pronouns of he and she bother you. We don't let pronouns bother us around here. Yeah, we don't. The she means just the bride of Christ. So you could understand it in human terms. But this is the entire body of Christ is the bride of Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So what is our mission in the kingdom? Here you go. Real simple. Yeah. To advance the kingdom of God by preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ with the demonstration of God's power and to empower disciples to be mature, powerful vessels of God. Whoa! That's a, what a mission, right? Amen. And then our vision, that's the mission. The vision is to equip, to edify the body of Christ through the five offices of ministry according to Ephesians 4.11, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. We are committed to raise up revival carriers who burn passionately for Jesus. That's good. I said, you know, I plagiarized that. Where did I get that from? The mission statement of 5F Church. Yes. Go to their yeah. website. Come on. Yes. Beautiful. Go to their website. It's real simple. There's no big fancy words in there. There's no five multi-syllable words in there. It's real simple. Hello. This is what I have laid hold of. Amen. This is what I want is a mission and a vision. A mission and a vision. Because this is the mission and the vision of the kingdom of God right now. Amen. This is the Hallelujah. mission and the vision of the kingdom. Amen. Did you get that? Amen. This is the kingdom plan. Amen. It can't fail. Yeah. It can't fail. Hallelujah. Just become one with the kingdom plan as you Hallelujah. become one with the king. Amen. Now, I want to tell you real quick how this relates to the world. Because in the world, we have many spheres of influence, and some people talk about the seven mountains of influence. Okay, well, that does have validity. That does have validity. But nothing can happen in the political realm, the governmental realm, or any of the other seven mountains on the earth until it happens in the church. Wow. Wow. You can't vote in holiness. You can't get enough school board members to change the entire education system to where now they're teaching and preaching godliness in the schools again. You can't arrest enough people in hip-hop, Hollywood, or media and put them behind bars to clean up Hollywood, mm. to clean up the music yeah. industry, yeah. arts and entertainment. Okay. You can't shut down enough news sources on TV or, or, or on the internet and, and to bring in holiness. Yeah. Until the church, until the church is restored. Yeah. Now I want to point you really quickly. This is not going to be an in-depth study. I'm going to point you really quickly to a very brief understanding of the menorah. The menorah was called the lampstand in the tabernacle. The menorah was in the tabernacle that God designed because Moses designed it according to the one he saw in heaven. There's seven, seven spirits of God. There's seven continents on the earth. There's seven major seas in the earth. Seven is the number of completion. God created the earth in seven days. We must understand that what God did in the tabernacle or in the temple was always a shadow of Christ concealed. Wow. Now in this new revelation of the kingdom, it's Christ revealed. So the Jewish people didn't understand what this meant. They just did it. They understood. But let me explain it to you. So this is a seven branch menorah. The one in the center of the lampstand supplies oil to the other branches. Every single day in the temple, every single day in the tabernacle, the center was filled with oil, which represents the Spirit of God and anointing. Wow. As the center was filled with oil, then the other branches would receive the oil. They were lower 
They were on a lower level than the center. The center branch is the church. Wow. 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 That's neat. If you have ears to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying. Mm. The revival has to happen in the church. Mm. You can have your protests. You can shut down abortion clinics or try to. You can, you can remove somebody from office. You can put somebody else in office. But it's never going to be the way it's supposed to be until this end time revival comes to the church and stays. Hallelujah. It can't be a flash in the pan, one or two Amen. year fill up and then dries out. Amen. That's why this end time revival will take us to the return of Jesus Christ. But don't you know that this end time revival is to affect all the other six mountains? Hallelujah. The highest mountain is Mount Zion. That's right. Amen? Amen? That's the church. So the other... The other, the, the menorah represents the light of the world. We need light yeah. in every sphere of influence on this planet. Yes. We will. God will do it. Yeah. God will do it. Yeah. By a few or by many. Yeah. Whoever is willing, he will do it. Amen. So now the church is the center branch which supplies oil to all the other branches. The seven branches represent, number one, the church. It's the main one. The others come out of it. It is the main core. It is Jesus and his bride. Then comes the church. The church is first. Then comes family, government, and education, business, media, and arts and entertainment. It's going to take you to purposefully resist the lies of the enemy to think that this world is going to go to hell in a handbasket. To think that everything's going to go down you're going to have to shut off the news, the negative news, Amen. and the devil's lies about what is happening. Amen. And you, what you need to do is believe in this revival, believe that God is doing it, believe that the king has come, the king of this kingdom will bring his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven as you stay in your lane. As you stay in your lane. My, my lane is in the center branch. That's my calling is in the ministry. My calling is right there. I don't know what your calling is. God will raise up Christian anointed political leaders who will receive their anointing from the, from the source. They'll be part of the church. The church is just going to be one church. Just let me let you know. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, Amen. the denominations will be dissolving like sugar cubes Amen. in water. Hallelujah. Because that wasn't God's plan. That's not the plan of the kingdom. Because we don't have body parts strewn all over and say, look at our wonderful body. No. It's dismembered. We need to come together. Yes. And so there will be there will be godly people in education. There will be godly people in, in, in earthly government. When the righteous rule, the nation's at peace. The nations are enjoying the peace and prosperity. Okay, there'll be godliness in schools. There'll be godliness restored to families. We're, we're, we're gonna, the divorce rate's going to plummet. Hallelujah. The marriage rate's going to soar. Jesus. The single will be happy being single, but the married will be happy being married. Amen. God will bring people together. God will restore because he sets the solitary in families. So we'll all be the family of Christ and nobody will say, well, I'm just a single and I need to go to the singles group. No, you're part of the whole group, the family. God will restore businesses. Some of you have suffered so much during these last few years. In California alone, we have so many regulations and so many taxes. And you, you put up a sign in front of your business, you've got to pay the tax on it. Yeah. You've got to pay the city to put a sign up in front yeah. of your building. You've got to pay every year to have fire extinguishers and have a city license. And if, you know, But you can complain about that all you want. But God says, I'm getting rid of those demonic regulations. Yeah. I am getting rid of all the, the fat and all the lies and all the, 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 the stuff that doesn't need to be there. I'm going to bless businesses. I'm going to call people to start businesses. It may be little in the beginning, but you're going to prosper. I'm going to give you wisdom because you're receiving your anointing from the main stand, the main shaft of that menorah. You're walking in the anointing and your businesses will flourish. Hallelujah. There'll be people that want to come and work for you. You'll be a great employer and there'll be great employees. And together you will raise up a blessing Amen. for the community. Hallelujah. A blessing for the community. 
But you must understand that this is the kingdom plan. You will see it come to pass, but you need to just stay in your lane. Don't get off worried on any other topic right now, because God's will shall be done. Amen. In Luke 17, 20 to 21, it says, Jesus was once asked by the Jewish religious leaders, well, when will God's kingdom come? Jesus responded, God's kingdom does not come simply by obeying principles or waiting for signs. Hallelujah. Right. It doesn't come by just keeping the law Amen. or hoping some prophet comes and says, your city is now blessed. Uh, we flew an airplane over your city and we declared it blessed. Uh -oh. Signs and wonders. No. He says the kingdom is not discovered in one place or another. Uh, for God's kingdom realm is already expanding within some of you. Wow. Who would the some be? Those who want it. Those who come hungry. Those who want to see with spiritual eyes and hear with spiritual ears and are ready to shut off the noise in the world and say, yeah. all I want is you. All I want is your will. I don't look to the right, to the left. I just look at you, Jesus. I follow you so I can actually be so heavenly minded. I am of earthly good. Oh, Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Look what Hebrews talks about the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 12, 28 says, Since we are receiving our rights to an unshakable kingdom. Right. What? Yes. It's unshakable. That's right. We should be extremely thankful and then offer God the purest worship that delights his heart as we lay down our lives, our plans, our little kingdom plans, our 401k that we're living for, and our RV we're going to drive to Maine and back. Lay down your plans in absolute surrender. Filled with awe. For our God is a holy, devouring fire. fire. Oh, holy fire, burn upon my altars. From within me, spirit, you take over. Holy fire, burn upon my altars. Let the fire of my altar never burn out. Let the fire of my altar never burn out. This is the house of praise. Hallelujah! Yeah. 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 You become one with God's plan. You become a little part of His kingdom on earth. And as we all gather together, this kingdom is broadcast all over Amen. the planet. Hallelujah! And Amen. you are a very important part of the plan. Hallelujah. Look at Revelation 1.6. This is not going to be. This is now. Look at this. He has made us a kingdom of what? Priests. Priests. Of our God and His Father. All glory and power to Him forever and ever. We are now. We are now made. Not a kingdom of babies. Not a kingdom of I do it my way. She does it her way. You do you. I do me. No. A kingdom of priests. Who worship the one and all, almighty God in awe and splendor. All glory and power to him forever. See yourself as a priest Amen. unto God. See yourself as completely set apart. Hallelujah. So the world can't touch you. Amen. The world has no influence in your life. Negativity yes. has no place in your thoughts or in your yes. mind. Yes. Amen. You're Amen. humble. You're kind. You're surrendered. Yeah. You're gentle. Hallelujah. And now, my, my last slide, I know I repeated that, but look at Revelation 5.10. You see, the kingdom is not going to be the kingdom is now. Amen. And it's expanding within some of you, even now. The kingdom is expanding on the inside of you. By the power of God, by the revelation of God, the more hungry, the more you get fed. The more thirsty, the more you drink. The more expectant you are, the more you will experience His glory and His power. Hallelujah. You have chosen us to serve our God. And you have formed us into a kingdom of priests who reign on the earth. Hallelujah. Now, does that open up your eyes a little bit more today about the kingdom plan? Yes. It's not just sweet by and by. No. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Amen. When we all see Jesus, then we'll shout the victory. We will do 
do that then? Absolutely. Yes. But we do it now. Yes. We do it now. Yes. And the Lord says, as you come in, as we walk in step, as we walk in step with the King, we march together as one army. Yes. We march together and we take back the territory that the enemy has stolen in our whole world and especially in the church. Amen. We don't do it with weapons of warfare that are carnal. Amen. We don't do it with sticks and clubs and guns. We do it with weapons of our warfare that are mighty through God. Hallelujah. That first of all, spiritually, pull down strongholds. Amen. Wow, say that. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We need to be aware that the enemy has infiltrated the church. That's right. There's sin in the camp. Well, not so much. I'll tell you what the sin is. It's the enemy has infiltrated the church and watered down the new wine to where it's very, it is it's not even drinkable. You can't, is this wine or is this water? I don't know. It's so watered down. But when you drink it straight, a hundred proof new wine. Say it. That's, that's You'll never go back to the old stuff again. You'll never go back to that old bottle again. You'll never go back to that old lukewarm church again. That old powerless church. You will be ruined. Because you have received the new, the best, and the lasting wine. It's the anointing. It's the only thing served in the kingdom. Amen. It's the anointing. You are a vessel. To carry the new wine. Wow. You need to become a new wine skin to be able to expand. Mm -hmm. If you can't expand, you will explode. Mm -hmm. And not in a good way. Mm. If you cannot expand, you will explode. Wow. You will never be able to carry the new wine. You will be ruined. And the new wine that was poured into you will be spilled out on the ground. That's what happens to people who just come, get a little taste, and then leave. And go back to their church for other reasons. Like, well, that's my community. That's my tribe. They all speak my language. We all dress alike. We look alike. I go to a black church. I can't go to a white church. We're going to go to a rainbow church. Hey, no, no, you know what I'm saying, right? Multicolored church. Multicultural, multicolor, multi-age, multi. We're going to all be in this family yes, of God. Yes, and we're all going to be doing the works of God. There's nobody going to be sitting in the corner going, I don't fit in. Yes, you do. Get up out of your seat. Come on, let's go. Let's go. First of all, just learn how to march. Left, left. Left, right, left. Just march. Left, left. Left, right, left, right. God's got an army marching through the land. Soldiers of the light with the spirit in their hand. Right? Yeah, we're going to march together. March to the beat of the Holy Spirit through the vessels he's called. Amen. The ministers of God in this end time revival. You'll know who's there and you know who's not. Wow. Listen. Listen, if they're not in the end time revival, if they're not part of the anointing, but they were your favorite for so many years and you got so many books and you got hundreds of dollars invested, don't go back. Amen. Don't go back. There's nothing back there. Amen. Press on to this new calling. Press on into the kingdom because pretty soon the old will but it will eventually just disappear. Amen. And the only thing that will be is the kingdom of God because it's unshakable, unbreakable, and so are you. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is, this is the time for you to lay a hold of the plans of God for your life. Nobody can stop you if you don't let them. Amen. Nobody can talk you out of it if you don't let them. Nobody can take away your anointing, your gift, or your calling if you don't let them. Yes. Nobody can silence you if you don't let them. Mm -hmm. Nobody can stop you from becoming everything that God calls you to be if you don't let them. I'm going to invite you right now to sow into the kingdom of God. This is part of your worship.
this is part of your worship. When you bring your seed, your tithe, your offering to the Lord, you're bringing it with a heart of worship. You're not saying, oh no, now I'm not going to be able to pay the rent. Don't take your rent money and put it into the offering. God doesn't want you to do that. There may be one or two instances in my life where God said, I want you to trust me with this large amount. But it wasn't on a continual basis. He just spoke to me about the tithe. The tithe. Some people say, well, if I, give, if I completely empty out my wallet and my bank account, then God will really bless me. No, you might be evicted. <laughs> you might get foreclosed on. You might go into so much stress that you have a breakdown. God's not about that. God says, I want you to steward your money well. I want you to steward what comes in and steward what goes out. I put you in charge of the money. Put me in charge of you. And everything will be added into you. So as you bring a tithe, as you bring a gift, and as you plant a seed, do it with worship and do it with wisdom. Amen. Do it with joy. Do it with a humble, grateful heart. For those of you who are here, there's envelopes on your chairs. For those of you who are watching online, we have a website. You can go there to sow. It's truegracechurch.com. And there's a link on there where you can give hallelujah to the work of the Lord, to this kingdom work. Because we're part of the kingdom. Amen. We're doing a mighty work for God. Amen. We're doing things for God, and this is what the beginning of it looks like. And you know, when you get in on the ground floor, you might say, yeah, but this isn't that big fancy building like the Taj Mahal or something. Like, I can't even see the temple so high in the sky. Let the Lord show you what you're sowing into. Amen. Because when you sow, you reap. Immediately. You will immediately begin reaping because you immediately begin to loose the Spirit of God to begin pouring back into you. As I said on Wednesday, nobody goes and looks at a plot of ground and goes, Oh, when's the seed going to come up that they never planted? Oh, right. You'd, you'd look like a lunatic out there standing by the side of the road going, Well, what are you doing? I'm, I'm waiting to see if some seed comes up. Did you plant any seed? No. Then there's nothing going to come up All right. but the farmer. The sower expectantly watches the ground with excitement and joy, prays over that seed, declares over that seed. Thank you, Lord, that even though I can't see that seed yet, it's growing. Roots are going down deep. I water it. I speak over it. It's in good ground. It's in good soil. It's in fertile ground. I see other trees planted by this river, and they're big and beautiful. Their leaves are not withering, and they're bringing forth fruit in their season. So you know what? I want to be planted right there. Amen. I don't want to be. I'm tired of being in the desert, dried up, blowing away. I want to be right by the river of water. And when you plant into God's kingdom, you can't help but reap. Amen. So I want to speak over you right now. If you're sowing into the kingdom, if you're sowing here today at True Grace Church, I want to speak a blessing. Hold up your envelope, your hand, or your phone in Jesus' name. I speak over every single one in this congregation right now. I speak over every single one who is online, who is sowing. I speak and declare supernatural provision come back to you from this seed. I speak that you begin to reap right now a hundred Fold return on the beautiful heart of worship that you are sowing this seed with. Finances, health, blessing, favor, future provision for all that you need in every season of life. May this always be accredited to you by God Almighty as He keeps a ledger and is writing down every time you became a worshiper with finances into His kingdom. Be blessed now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can bring your seed up into the basket. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mike, could you just play a little bit? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The preaching of the kingdom of God is with power. It's not with fancy words. It's with power. As we read in the very first scripture, Jesus went about healing all who were sick. Everybody who was brought to Jesus was healed. Everybody who was brought to Jesus who had demons was delivered. Everybody
somebody who brought relatives to Jesus and friends and family. They were set free because the power of God, the power of the God, the power of God is part of the kingdom, authority, and power on the earth. Jesus wants to move in your life and in your situation right now. Whatever you've been encountering in your life that has held you back, whatever that has plagued you, whatever that has followed you and trailed you, whatever demonic spirits have taken your life and left it like a shell with nothing inside. God says, I'm here to fill you. I'm here to free you and I'm here to fill you. I'm here to give you the life you never dreamed you could have. I'm here to set you free from your captors who were too strong for you to break free from. God delivers people because of his love. God delivers people because he loves us so much. God delivers people to show the devil you don't have reign and rule over my human beings that I love. You must leave when the anointing is released in power. If you come into this church today, you're in the domain of the authority that God has given to me and to Apostle Mary. Yes. If you're coming on live, you are on this live and in this domain right now, the Lord has delivered and given us authority to speak to every demon that's been harassing you, tormenting you, traumatizing you, making you do things you didn't want to do, to command all of those powers and principalities to leave you. Is there a lady watching right now named Chantal? C-H-A-N-T-A-L. She was going to come on. Larry Bible. Can you see her on your phone? Apostle Larry. She asked if I would do it. Titus. Personal. Chantal. C-H. Titus. No. Tinnitus. Did you say sinus or tinnitus? Tinnitus. Ringing in the ears. Yes. Yes. She was on. She was on. I specifically want to speak to you right now, Chantal. You've been contacting me. You've wanted private um, prayers. But I'm going to tell you right now, the anointing is here right now. Yeah. You don't need a private one-on-one, -on -one, but you're going to get one right now through the phone. Because the Holy Spirit is not limited to physical laying on of hands. If that were the case, we couldn't receive anything from Jesus because he's not physically here anymore. But the anointing now is going to come to you. Chantal, I want you to renounce tinnitus. Just say, I renounce it. I don't claim it as mine. Say, I renounce the ringing in my ears. In the name of Jesus, I detach you from what you just renounced, Chantal. And I speak to every spirit. That's been causing the rain in your ears and tinnitus to leave you on three. One, two, three. Out now. I break every generational curse and the power that these curses have had on your life, and I come in every spirit to leave now. I declare every spirit of witchcraft that's been spoken over your life or spoken into your life to be broken now in every spirit of witchcraft to leave. All powers of demonic influences, all spells people have done over you, all word curses that have been spoken over you, I break their power and I command every spirit to leave now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of old wine religion, every spirit of condemnation, I command to leave your life right now in Jesus' name. Be free. Be free now, Chantal. Be free from the enemy's chokehold in your life. Be free from this ringing in the ears. Be free from this incessant noise. Be free now in Jesus' name. Be free. Child of God, it's your portion. 
And I release this anointing to you now, Shanta. God's joy, peace, peace to your mind, peace to your heart, joy on the inside to you now. This anointing to flow into you. This anointing to silence the enemy. Silence your accuser. Silence the voice of condemnation. And speak life to you now. Jesus is ministering life to you now. Come and drink from his cup. Come and drink. Your cup is overflowing right now. Healing is yours. In Jesus' name, be healed. illness that's attacked your body. I'm going to invite everybody to stand right now. I want to declare over you the words of the Lord right now. I detach you from every illness, every sickness, every disease, every plague, every malady, every birth defect. Every part of your body that's not working properly. Every part of your body that's causing pain, that's bringing, there's pain in it. It's immobile. It's not able to function as it ought to. Any spirit, any sickness, any weakness in you, renounce it. It's not yours. Renounce it. I no longer claim it as my own. It's not mine. In Jesus' name, I detach you from every spirit of infirmity, no matter what it is. I speak to every demonic spirit, attacking every single person's body. And I declare that you must go out, all of you, all of you now, in Jesus' name, at the count of three. Every sickness, every pain, every symptom, every weakness. One, two, three. Out! In Jesus' name now, out! Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And now I release this anointing of healing to you. This anointing of healing, be restored in the parts of your body now. Be restored. Right now, some of you just are, are experiencing the fire of God. You're feeling warm in those body parts. You're feeling the heat of God. You're feeling tingling. You're feeling things coming back to life. You're, you're, you're feeling a tingling like a person who had, who had crippled feet. All of a sudden their toes are wiggling. They can feel blood flow. God's, God's blood, God's healing power is flowing into you right now. Restoring parts of your body. Reviving things in your body that weren't working anymore. Bringing strength back when you were weak. Reviving you. Causing you to be filled with the joy of Jesus causing you to be filled with the help that flows in this kingdom. The realm of heaven's kingdom is health and wholeness. I release this anointing of joy and peace to you now. I command every spirit of anxiety and fear to leave. Fear of the future. Out. Not. Demonic spirits. They don't get to write your story. They don't get to read a false narrative about you. They don't get to prophesy into your life. The Lord says, Come to my table. Let me look into your eyes and let me prophesy to you. The kingdom's plan. The Lord says, It's time to come. Continue to come to the table. Continue to come to where the anointing is flowing. Come to where the apostles, the prophets, and the fivefold ministers are able to hear from the Lord and pour into you and equip you and empower you and encourage you. And then it's your job to receive encouragement. You can't eat if you keep your mouth closed. You can't drink if your lips are shut. You must open your mouth wide and He will fill it. 
Open your heart wide right now and God will fill your heart with more hope and more joy and more peace than you ever dreamed possible. Amen. Be you according to his heart, according to your faith right now. Let this anointing flow to you now in Jesus' name. Overflow! Overflow!